How airships work? In 1784, Jean Pierre Blanchard fitted a hand powered propeller to a balloon. And in 1785, 109 years before the Wright brothers, he crossed the English Channel in a balloon equipped with a flapping wings for propulsion and a bird like tail for steering. Giving birth to airships, it does not seem that complicated now, but it was unimaginable before Jean. Do you know how airships work? Let's find out. Welcome back to Thought Control. An airship is a type of aerostate or lighter than air aircraft that can navigate through the air under its own power. Aerostates gain their lift from a lifting gas that is less dense than the surrounding air. Because of its high lifting capacity and ready availability, the gas used in early airship was hydrogen. Helium has almost the same lifting capacity and is not flammable, unlike hydrogen, but is rare and relatively expensive. Still, most airships built since the 1960s have used helium, though some have used hot air. So what is it exactly made of? The envelope of an airship may form the gas bag or it may contain a number of gas filled cells and airship also have engines, crew and optionally also payload accommodations typically housed below the envelope. The main types of airship are non-rigid, semi-rigid and rigid. Non-rigid airships often called blimps rely on internal pressure to maintain their shape. Semi-rigid airship maintain the envelope shape by internal pressure but have some form of supporting structure such as a fixed keel attached to it. Rigid airships have an outer structural framework that maintains the shape and carries all structural loads while the lifting gas is contained in one or more internal gas bags or cells. Rigid airships are often called Japelins. And how do they work? An airship controls its buoyancy in the air in the same way like a submarine does in the water. Through the air valves, the gas, usually helium, makes the air positively buoyant in the surroundings. So the airship rises. The pilot throttles the engine and adjusts the elevator to angle the ship into the wind. The cone shape also helps to generate lift. As the ship rises, air pressure outside of it decreases and so the helium in the envelope expands. The pilot then pumps air into the bolognets to maintain pressure against the helium. Adding air will make the ship heavier, so in order to maintain a steady altitude, the pilots have to balance the air pressure outside with the helium pressure inside to create neutral buoyancy. The engines provide forward and reverse thrust while the rudder is used to steer. In order to land, pilots simply make the ship heavier by pumping more air into the bolognets. And that's how they work. Airships were the first machine capable of controlled powered flight and were very commonly used before the 1940s. Their use obviously decreased as their capability was surpassed by those of aeroplanes. Airships are big and hence have a very large drag coefficient. So the drag force generated by the air is larger compared to that of planes and helicopters, making them significantly slower. Their maximum speed range is between 130 to 160 km. But still, airships have advantage of their own and that's why they are still in use. The biggest one being they require almost negligible engine power. Their flight is generated by the lifting gas. So if your goal is not speed but the ability to hover in the air for a long time, airships are the best option. This proves to be a great deal of resource to the fields of advertising, tourism, geological surveys, aerial observation, etc. Thanks for watching this video. If you have any feedback, please let us know in the comment section below. And do not forget to share and subscribe to the channel. What's your name? My name is Chutki. Hey, would you like to fly on airship? Yes, definitely. Why not? Please subscribe. Bye-bye. Tata. Hasta la vista. Bye-bye.